What state are we in, Justine? The Sunshine State. Fault advertisement. He likes when mommy pets him with his feet. With the feet. So we left Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve morning. I tried to get you up at 5 a.m. We got out around 6 a.m. Took a while to get out of Isla Mujeres proper, the whole shallow area around the point of Cancun because we were heading into the wind, we were heading into current, and we knew that first couple of hours was going to be the longer slog. And then eventually we get out of that and we slingshot up towards Cuba. The Gulf Stream did pick us up as we expected, making us head a little more north than we wanted at the time. And it was forecast that for about four days we were going to have some easterly slash southeasterly winds. We wanted to come to Cuba quite close as kind of a plan B. We could anchor on the corner, the southern corner of Cuba if we needed to, but the Gulf Stream actually pushed us up more than we expected. That was kind of our first surprise, I guess, experience with weather and current. Now the wind vane was doing heroically. It steered most of that time with the perfect amount of wind to control ratio. We can't get the exact heading that we want with the wind vane, especially with the current pushing us north. Our pilots will give you nice straight lines, but the wind vane maintains the boat to the wind angle. That is the wind most angle appropriate. Change, so you always like, if you set it to broad reach, if the wind change, your direction will change, but the boat maintains its sail angle. So your course will be best at whatever the boat will be able to maintain a comfortable and good strong wind angle where it's making good speed. So on the day that we left, the weather was as we were expecting and we were able to make like a beam reach all the way to Cuba across the Gulf Stream. There is so much lightning. I've never seen this much. 45 miles from the coast. Christmas morning. I know you really want to lick your butt right now, but I'm, I'm speaking. We stuck along the Cuban coastline as close as we could because at this point, if everything looks good, if we have the wind and if we feel that the waves are not too high, then we can cross. And in fact, there was really, really supposed to be a perfect southeasterly blowing by the third day. But after some showers, after some thunderstorms, after some lightning and thunder, we started to discover that the forecast was not <laughs> exactly as we planned because be uh, when i when i looked at the forecast and i still have the forecast recorded on my computer it said it was going to be southeasterly like there was no indication that it was going to be anything else so on the third morning it became very calm we were losing all wind as we were starting to cross and by the daylight hours, I was like, hey, the wind is kind of coming from the north. And it was like, why is there a north here? There shouldn't be northerlies for two more days. Because, of course, we expect it's winter, there's going to be some northerlies coming again after. But they came two days early, essentially, the northerlies. And it just started to get more and more northerly. And I was like, yeah, I felt that the, in the pit of my stomach, this worry, like, oh, the northerlies are back which is exactly when you would not want to make the trip that we just made. We've waited months 
to have a weather window of four days so that there are four days of some sort of easterly, southeasterly. That was not happening. My stomach dropped because basically we are not equipped to beat into wind in our face circumstances for two days. What we did discover is, fortunately on this trip, is that the engine with a little bit of ca extra care, we can, we can do it. Because I, th we, Robbie didn't think, <laughs> definitely Robbie didn't think that we could motor for 30 hours with this engine. Like, that was not something we hoped to do. That was not something we planned to do. We didn't think it was possible, but technically it was possible. So we have a freshwater impeller and we have a raw water impeller. The old little freshwater impeller leaks water. We can see the drip drip coming out. That drips about a cup of water every two or three hours. So we put on the timer every two, three hours. Not only are we having to put on a timer for who's on the tiller, we also have the timer on to remind us. Robbie will fill the water in the heat exchanger, top it up and also, we're gonna relieve each other from our tiller duties every two or three hours because, you know, having the wind vane changed our life for when we're able to sail, but of course, under motor power, we are not able to use the wind vane. We had a choice that we could now run south towards Cuba. We are not prepared to check into Cuba, but it was also, you know, that's a plan B. So we resolved to motor for the rest of the time up here to Florida. So motor sailing, beating into the wind and using some of our tacking capabilities, which are quite limited when you have to tack into the Gulf Stream. So you can try to tack going towards the Gulf Stream and you will not even make headway necessarily on that tack. At the point where I expected the Gulf Stream to kick in and to push us east towards Key West. We were motoring and, and our motor is not the strongest motor if you've been following that saga. We know that we only make like three, four knots under calm, flat, no, nothing against us conditions. So at some point we became becalm. There was not a drop of wind and I was steering the boat and I was like, there is not even wind to be felt on my face. And the boat was only going to knots. I was like, there's got to be a back eddy here of current because we're getting actively current against us, which is the weirdest thing. You would think up in front of the Keys, 60 miles into the center of the Gulf Stream, and I was like not expecting to ha be fighting something under engine power in the middle of a place where we should have two knots to three or four knots of current helping us forward. So that was a weird experience. So glad you guys are okay. I heard you guys on the radio calling the Coast Guard. Okay, we lost everything, so we've been limping our way back to get here. So let me get the anchor down. Uh, I guess you got pretty good holding there. Uh, it is rocky, but the anchor caught right away, and uh, we've been basically not moving. Like, as we're doing this video, trying to film each other, doing a review of the trip, we found out that the boat that was next to us, next to Isla Mujeres, I think we still haven't got all information, but I think they did get hit by a ship and uh, we're glad that they're safely here anchored next to us and we're gonna get more information about that but it just shows anything can happen at trip and it was one of my main concerns we were tired we don't have AIS we don't have radar and especially the second day of our trip when it was rough and the visibility was bad it was my butterfly in the stomach feeling I had of getting hit by a ship we did cross several shipping channels and uh, yeah we got pretty close to ship sometimes, and I guess you lose sometimes. I'm sorry, I need to clear my throat. I mean, it makes you think, you know, like, you know, we could have lost a mast, and that's the end of our sailing on this boat. It just makes you think, you know, we got lucky. We arrived. I mean, if, if our engine overheated or anything happened, you know, we, we didn't get here in time. We could have been outside, you know, losing a mast in a, in a, in a strong gust or something. It shouldn't. I mean, the rigging is fairly new, and we're not pushing the boat. But it always, it's always, you know, what I call a reality check. I mean, God, we were, we were, we were ogling that boat four days ago, five days ago. We were like, whoa, what a nice boat. And we were looking online, all the facts and stuff. And It's been a particularly windy and stormy week, I think. Yes, we had a, a multitude of diverse uh, conditions. First, we left with with uh, basically the what I call the choppiest chop, the washing machine, which is basically Isa Mujeres to Cuba, 
Then when we arrived near Cuba, the wet the weather was the wind was better. Well, it was a more favorable angle, but then we got hit by unforecasted uh, squall one after the other one. So then we were riding squalls all day. So on the third day we were becalmed. So then we had to rely on a non-reliable engine, which in the end was reliable with a bit of love and attention. And then we arrived closer to the coastline, and we, count, we were really counting on on a very strong stream to shoot us to our destination yeah. and it was playing hard to get basically oh yes i thought there was a lot of nets and traps in asia holy shit, there is a lot of traps in key, in key west i don't think i've ever seen such a minefield of crap and lobster pots in my life it is mathematically impossible not to hit one uh, with your engine get fouled i mean you, i would never never recommend that anybody ever sail the lower keys at night i mean there was one what two every boat length apart from each other yeah. like i don't know how we didn't so we're really happy we we came in yes because we wouldn't have made it this far north we would have we probably gotten in very late at night in the keys and possibly gotten hit by this weather we've been sheltering all day here at anchor so yeah we got we got in with hours to spare luckily like literally hours to spare there were still cargo ships coming quite close yes we had cargo the, ships going the, come come close to us because on the morning that we just came into the keys here the last cargo ship that we passed in front of because it came over the horizon pointing straight at us and we were just several miles from the entrance into the key here yeah we could get hit by cargo ships i mean until i'm, the I'm last pretty good at judging miles. what like, especially the second night when it was very really stormy we had a bunch of ship pass by me and i've had them snuck out you know you turn around holy shit, there's a ship right there yeah that happened to me more times than i than i admit i like happening when you start seeing a color you know you see red, she's gonna pass one way. You see green, she's gonna pass another. You see red and green, she's heading straight for you. Usually you have, you know, yeah, 12. Yeah, you don't wanna see that red and green in your Yeah, red and green view. is bad news, right? When you see ships, I mean, she's pointing straight at you. And and we did have, they did sneak up on you. I mean, you're sitting, you know, you're lying down. You said, oh, I'm just gonna lie down 10, 15 minutes. But you know, they, these suckers, they, they, they travel fast. And it, it that's what it takes. It takes 15 minutes from them to be on the horizon to, to them be on top of you, literally. Yes. Like, that's all it takes to lose everything. 15 minutes of, of being distracted, like... We were setting timers, especially when the wind vane was working. I Maybe, we, yeah, now this makes us reconsider. The dinghy is put on one of their uh, scoops instead of a davit, and I'm thinking they might have even damaged their, their davit. Probably the mass came down backwards and the boom probably went through the davits. Mm. I, I think they lost the mast backwards. The holding is not too well here, not too good here. I think they are good. And it ripped up the forward... Uh, it bri ripped up the forward uh, stress beam. They must have cut rigging. loose the rigging and chucked the mast in the water. There's like, there's a crack right down the... the they're probably taking in water when they were beating into the waves. Looks like right now the, the port hull the front port hall has a big crack going down it and it looks all mangled. They probably hit on the port hall. Impact on port hall and mast must have come back, which is weird because usually if you hit something, the mast pops forward. Hey there, you guys settled in? Yeah, I think so. It's been uh, a hell of a two days uh, since we uh, got hit in the middle of the night. And of course, today was a total shit show trying to get here. Yeah, we heard uh, the Coast Guard this morning uh, getting a report and we're not sure if it was you guys and uh, we were just wondering if you guys uh, need anything, we're gonna, we're gonna make a hot pasta in a while, if you guys need a hot meal and don't feel like cooking, uh, let us know. Oh man, you guys are awesome, thank you so much. Humanity is actually uh, cooking up something right now. I think the number one thing we've got to uh, sort out is we need to get some comms. Uh, we've got zero comms besides VHF. Uh, it took out obviously the uh, Starlink, it took out everything. So. We have the inReach, it's pretty limited, yeah. we can only send texts. We have uh, a small, one of the small inReach spot things that we can send text uh, messages, and uh, we have a uh, longer rate, uh, range of uh, VHF that you might be able to get uh, a hold of someone in Key West with. Yeah, good copy. Yeah, I have an inReach too. Um, yeah, unfortunately I won't be able to deal with the insurance uh, brokers uh, via that little 
that device. Uh, I need to get on email and and, uh, and start submitting uh, all the incidents, etc., and, and get that process working because that's going to be a long road. I bet, I bet, yeah. I mean, wow. You guys must be still pretty much shell shocked. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, I woke up about 10 seconds prior uh, when she lady woke, woke me up, and she, and she had a nervous tone in her in her voice, and uh, I was still dazed as uh, I'm sleeping uh, as to what was going on. And, and when I looked up, all I saw was this huge black wall. Uh, it was unbelievably tall. And there was just nothing I could do. Uh, and so next thing you know, we got hit. Uh, yeah, we, we had a couple of, not close ones, but a couple of ships passed really close to us uh, near Cuba. It was really stormy and uh, they used to pop out of school. So, okay, um, I, I'm going to let you guys rest and anything. And uh, we are heading in tomorrow morning to do our check-in. And uh, yeah, if you guys need uh, uh, somebody to stay along with you guys, we're heading in tomorrow morning and uh, I'll probably stay along with you guys to make sure everything's okay. We are here, if you guys need anything, standing by us. Don't hesitate, please. That's awesome, thank you so much. Hey, I don't know if you guys remember, um, I actually, uh, several months ago, I had sent you a question on, on your YouTube channel. No, I, I don't remember what the question was, no. Yeah, I, I found your channel uh, when I was searching Cozumel. I was curious about uh, Mexican uh, requirements uh, in, in some countries, you've got to check in in each uh, one. Yeah, I, I and that remember. was my question to you, whether you had to check in in Cozumel. Yeah, and I said that the uh, Mexican authorities don't say much. Finally, things started to calm down, and we were prepared to continue on towards our check-in process here in the USA. Thank you so much for watching, commenting, supporting. We hope to see you next time as our journey continues. Thank you.